Hmm? How many of you being on your pathfinder line, your adventure line, the, the Irish mission line? How many of you been there? How many? No one. So you don't know what the subject matter is tonight. What's the subject matter tonight? You don't know. Really? When? No. You're supposed to know. How come you don't know? You didn't go looking, right? Who's that? Who's that over there? I'm seeing you in the... In, are you on your bunk? Hey. All right, let's get straight into the subject matter tonight. The subject tonight is remember me. What is that? Remember me. Remember me. That's a famous passage of scripture. Go with me to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. And the Bible says something right there from verse 42 to 47. Luke chapter 23, verse 42 to 47. Are we there? The Bible says, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when, what? When thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, today, not tomorrow, but today. What day? Today. Ooh, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I command my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, certainly this was a righteous man. Certainly, this was a righteous man. But a person that I want to focus on this evening is the thief. Oh, the thief. Man, the subject matter says, remember me. Remember me. Why did the thief say, remember me? Why do you think the thief says, remember me? I want you to listen very carefully now. Stay with me for a moment. Yes, welcome. I see you. Hi. The story told about there was how many thieves were there on the cross? Anybody? Real quick, how many thieves were there on the cross? Two. Two. Thank you, Ruth. Two thieves. One was on their left side and the other was on their right side. Ooh. Now, guess what? Story goes like this. And I want to make it a little plain for you now. Story goes like this. Jesus of Nazareth was on the earth. And he was preaching and teaching to multitudes of people. To how many people? Multitudes of people. Lots of people. He was preaching and teaching. But then you see the people walking around. They were following him everywhere he go. They were following him. Young adventurers were following him everywhere he went. He was preaching and preaching. But there was the two thieves. How many? Two thieves. And while he was preaching, some of them had some fancy garments. Some of them had some fancy clothes. Guess what? Like some of you all today, you have some fancy things when you go to church. And while you're at church and you're listening to the preacher, and while they're there and they were preaching, Jesus was preaching, all of a sudden, he noticed that this one had a little thing around his neck. And guess what? It was a beautiful chain. And woo, a hand came out of nowhere and it was gone. Oh, the straw she had, a beautiful straw. She was listening to Jesus, but it was gone. It was expensive. It was a Persian one. Silk, a lot of gold and silver, all posted to it with threads. And oh man, it was there. It was gone. It was gone. Oh, straw. My mom gave that to me. <laughs> it is gone. But Jesus said to her, don't worry, my child. Don't worry. Don't worry. For I've got better things for you in paradise. I've got better things for you in paradise. Bless you, Ruth. I saw that sneeze. But guess what? As Jesus kept preaching, 
the seeds were around. The seeds kept being around because they know why. There's been this lots of people. There's lots of people. Lots of people. Nobody would know that they're there. And they were watching the opportunity and all of a sudden the preacher is preaching and Jesus is preaching and he's facing that way and there were people behind him and then the hand came again from nowhere and something else. Look, the hand, it came and something else went missing. Oh, who's going to? Something else. What is it? What's missing? Oh, his Bible is gone. It's gone. Beautiful. Oh, those printed scrolls that had so many wonderful messages that he was following. All of a sudden, it is gone. It is gone. And while Jesus is preaching, those thieves somehow was hearing the word of God. As he was preaching and going from city to city, they were hearing the word of God. They were hearing the word of God. But guess what? There came a time when Jesus, while he was preaching, he was watching everybody. He saw the things that was happening. Do you think that he know about those thieves? Yes, he did. He knew who those thieves were. But guess what? The thieves didn't know that he knew them. But it was one thief that he thought he was so good. He thought he was so arrogant. I don't need to listen to this man. Who is he? He can't even help himself. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, yeah, I hear your sermons all the time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's Boring. Oh, those sermons are boring. Oh, man. Why does he just shut up? And that thief would keep moving around and he keep moving around with that attitude. And Jesus will be saying, repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the other thief somehow, when he's going to steal, somehow or the other, it, it was hearing in his mind. And, and as he's about to take something, he only heard it say, thou shalt not steal. And his hands come back. His hands will come back. Because now, somehow or the other, the things that he's doing, he realized it is not right and his conscience is being pricked. His conscience is being pricked. Why? Because somehow he goes back home and he looks at all the things that he stole from the congregation while Jesus was preaching. He looked at all the things that he probably even stole from the temple and he stole from his friends and his fellow brethren in the church. But now, here comes the situation. The army. Is out there looking for people who are doing bad things. Some of you, do you do bad things? Ruth, do you do bad things? Hell no, do you do bad things? No. We are good girls, good adventurers. We don't do bad things. Uncle Alvin, no. We are adventurers at home at school and play. We are, oh, no. But this thief, was he adventurous? Yes, he was. He was adventurous because he went into even in the presence of Jesus and he was stealing. But did Jesus point him out? No, he did. Jesus did not point him out at all. Jesus did not point him out, but Jesus kept preaching about repentance and he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. And he was preaching the word. And he said, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's work, goods, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, or anything that is thy neighbor's. And while the Jesus was preaching from city to city, these thieves were moving around. And sometimes they were not at his sermon, but they heard the messages because from afar off, everywhere Jesus go, there were multitudes. And the man knew that this was an opportunity. But so was the army watching. And it came to a point in time that these two thieves got arrested. And this was happening before Jesus' time was about to get arrested. He went into the Garden of, of Gethsemane. And the Bible tells us that while he was in the Garden of Gethsemane in, 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 in Luke chapter uh, 22, in Luke chapter 22, he was there in Gethsemane. And what was he doing in Gethsemane? Do anybody know what he was doing in Gethsemane? Anybody? He was praying. He was praying. Who was he praying for? He Jesus. He was praying. You no, know, Jesus was praying. Who was he praying for? The thieves. He was praying for every single one of us, including the thieves. Well, and the thief, and us. Including the thieves. Yes, and you, Jack. Yeah, he was praying for you. And he was praying for you also, Ruth. And he was praying also for you, Elna Auger. He was praying for everybody. He was praying even for Uncle Alvin. And he was saying, well, Uncle Alvin, how could Jesus be praying for you? You was not born yet. 
I know, but Jesus was praying because he knew that I was going to be born sometime. And guess what? He knew I was going to be born into the sinful world. And some of the things that everybody was doing, I would have been doing too. So he was praying ahead of time for me. And he was praying. And he was praying. And he was praying in Gethsemane. Why was he praying? Who was he praying to? He was praying unto his father. He was praying unto his father. But guess what? Inside that garden, there was somebody else that was coming to meet Jesus. Who else was coming out to meet Jesus? There were the priests. And who else was coming out to meet Jesus? Oh, Judas. Judas. He was coming out to meet Jesus. And guess what? While they were coming out to meet Jesus, Jesus was doing what? He was praying. He was praying. He was praying. He was praying. And he was praying. And he was doing what? Praying. And while he was praying, where the thieves were, they were locked up. They were locked up. And Jesus was praying. Why? Because he knew that somehow or the other, the thieves would have to come to judgment. But he didn't come to destroy the thieves. He was giving every thief the opportunity so that they could hear his voice and they could make a decision to be saved. And while he was there praying, and he was there praying, he was there praying, people came, people came, and they came to do what? They came to find Jesus. To find Jesus. Why were they looking for Jesus? Because they were about to kill him. They were about to kill him. Were the priests also thieves? Were the priests also thieves? Yes, the thieves. The priest was also thieves. Why were the thieves? Why were the thieves? Because they were trying to rob the people of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were trying to rob the people by telling the people that Jesus is not who he said he was. They were trying to rob the people by saying that man is not a savior. He's an imposter. He's the thing. So we need to get rid of him because he's upsetting us. He's stopping us from making a lot of money. He's stopping us from getting rich. He's stopping us from doing and making us look good in front of the people. Is that what you're supposed to be as an adventurer? Are you supposed to just look good in front of people? Are you supposed to tell people about Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Are you supposed to tell people about Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Because you see, a thief is not just some person that steals things. A thief is also some person that does not tell uh, the people the truth about God. If you don't tell them the truth and you're stealing away the word of God and telling them lies, you're also a thief. A thief. You see, thieves come in many disguises. Thieves come in many disguises. And I want you to understand, it's not just about taking physical things. You can cause problems for people. You can cause problems for people when you've stolen their identity. Why? By telling something wrong about them. False. Thieves. I want you to understand something about these two thieves. Don't miss the story. Don't miss the story. The thieves, though, were now somehow put on trial. Jesus was brought in because he was trying to help the thieves. He was trying to help everybody that was being wicked. He was teaching everybody to be good people. Just like your moms and dads are teaching you, when you go to school, you must stand as God's children. When you go to school, you must be good boys and girls. When you go to school, you must not be doing the things that everybody else is doing. When you go to school and you're supposed to pay for your dinner, you must pay your dinner, you know, your, your dinner money to the teacher. Don't go and stand in line and eat the food and don't pay for your school meals. Don't go to the shop with your friends and take the candy bar and don't pay for it. That's stealing. And the Bible says, thou shalt not steal. Where's that found? Anybody know where that is? Exodus chapter 20. I'm not going to tell you the verse. You need to tell me the verse. And that was going to be part of your question. But in the Bible, God already warned us all the way a long time before Jesus came and locked to live as man that we should not steal. He gave that law way back then to Moses. And he also was laying it out before that. 
We should not steal. What is it that we're not supposed to do? We're not supposed to steal. You're not supposed to steal from your mom and dad. You're not supposed to steal from your friends. You're not supposed to steal from the church. You're not supposed to steal from anybody. For that don't belong to you. That's stealing. And if you're a thief, you're not going to make it to the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible says. But you see, when you repent, you will be able, and you go give back that which you've stolen, and you say, I'm sorry. God hears that sorry, and he will save you. Sometimes it means you got to be embarrassed. Sometimes it means you get told off. Sometimes it means you get scolded. But the best thing you can do if you have done something wrong is to tell the truth because the truth, the Bible says, shall set you free. That's in John chapter 8, verse 32. Thank you, Sarai, for that. The truth shall set you free. And who is the truth? According to John 14 and 6. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So Jesus was preaching this message. And the two thieves that were in the congregation, they were hearing this message all the time. But somehow or the other, one was getting convicted and the other was not. Sometimes when you go to church and you hear the preachers preaching, and you hear the preachers preaching, and some of you are sitting in the congregation, oh, that's so boring. Oh, and your friends is in the church and saying to you, look, 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 look. You see, yeah, yeah, this is this is your pathfinder. So look, you you would have forgot your scarf at home. But look, she's left her scarf right there. Don't let the teacher know that you didn't have your scarf. Look, you just take it. Nobody will see you. And you snatch the scarf and you put it around your neck like it was yours, and you know it's not yours. And the preacher is preaching, thou shalt not steal. And you know you're sitting there and you know you stole it. But you're pretending like you didn't. But then your friend now, who told you to take it, he's getting nervous because he knows the preacher's looking at him. And, and, and you're sitting there, oh, this is boring. But the preacher's looking at him, but you listen to your friends. You was listening to your friends. But you didn't realize that somebody had saw you. The counselor saw you. And the counselor went and told your mom. And now at a, at a Pathfinder thing and at the adventure program, you were called up the front and said, somebody took Naomi Scott. Who was it? Um, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't me. Seriously, it wasn't me. The preacher was preaching and his sermon was so boring. Um, I wasn't even listening. I wasn't paying attention because his sermon was so boring. He, he couldn't help nobody. He couldn't do nothing for me. So why do I need to go to church? That was like the other thief that was there. He was doing all of his things and he was not sad about what he was doing. He didn't care about stealing other people's stuff. He didn't care about taking other things. Jesus to him was boring. Jesus to him didn't matter to him because after all, there's no life after this. I can steal. I can do what I want. But now he's about to be crucified. He's about to be crucified. And when you read the story in the Desire of Ages and some of the other books that we have to explain the story, you will see that the two thieves that were right there, they were struggling and wrestling and struggling. Why? Because they were guilty and now they were afraid to die. But Jesus, Jesus, the Bible says, the Savior of the world, the Savior that came for them, the one who lived and died and was preaching to them, he did not go and say, say that for me. And he died, and he said that he would always be there. Wow. To the end. Wow. I, you, I hope you didn't hear what Sarai says. Jesus was not struggling. He was there, and he was just like a lamb going to the slaughter. Why? Because his purpose on earth was to save even those two thieves. But guess what? The two thieves were struggling. Because they knew that they were doing wrong. They know that they have done wrong. But Jesus was not struggling. Why? Because he knew that that which he was doing was right for them. He came to save them like he came to save you and me. And the Bible says the two thieves were crucified. The nails were put into their hands and they were screaming. Ah! 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 <laughs> Please, I'm sorry. I ain't going to do it again. But Jesus was not. Jesus was there. And he laid out. And while the nails were going into his hands, he was, his face was grimaced. But he was silent. Why? Because on his mind, 
was those two thieves. On his mind was everybody that was sinners in front of him. All the liars, those who were committing wrong things, those who were worshiping false gods, those who were lying, those who were not even listening to him. They were there and like a lamb to the slaughter, he was laying his life down to save them. Yes, sir. And even um, God, uh, he preaches to the same people that, um, that, that those did, but the devil went into the people and then the people changed with him. And now when he dies, Everything changes. Oh, wow. I hope you heard what Sarai said. That the, all the people that he saved, even there. And that the devil, even at that moment while he was on the cross, the devil started to move around those people and they started to mock him. And they started to move around those people and say, Oh, well, look at this man. He saved us once, but is he really truly the savior? Because if he was a savior, why don't he save himself? Why don't he come down now and save himself if he's the savior of the world? And guess who was there? Guess who was mocking him also the priests the pastors of the day they were mocking him and laughing at him the moms and dads some of them who jesus healed their children they were now looking up because satan had come around and they've forgotten how jesus had saved them and they were laughing at him but jesus was up there and in sadness he was looking down he laid out on the cross he laid out on the cross and the Bible says in Luke chapter 23, while he was up there, <clears throat> while he was up there in Luke chapter 23, the thief on one side and the thief on the other side. And this is what they said. One on the other side said in verse 39, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, if thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. That's the thief that didn't care. He was the one who thought, okay, well, this Jesus, he's boring anyhow. Uh, he keeps going on about the same thing. Save, 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 save. Who's he saving? If he's such a great savior, how come he can't stop the people from me stealing from them? How can he stop them? Look, I'm stealing this stuff. He doesn't even see me. But he didn't realize that Jesus saw him all the time. And Jesus was preaching to him, but because his ears were shut, he didn't hear Jesus. But guess what? The other thief that was in the crowd, every single time, those words fell on his ears. He would go back home and it would press upon his heart. And somehow or the other, over and over, it would press upon his heart. But here it is. But the other answered and rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not, dost not now fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we being indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man have done nothing amiss. Notice, the thief on the right-hand side, he's talking now, telling the other one, shut up. We have done wrong. We deserve this. But this man, he don't deserve it. He's not supposed to die. He is the one that came to save us. He is the one. Keep quiet. Yes, sir. And he said, remember me, and then, and then the other man said, and after, a crow, a crow his eye. Wow, yes, very carefully. Here, thank you very much, Sarai, for that. Thank you. But the Bible says, and he said unto Jesus in verse 42, Lord, remember me when thou comest into the kingdom. <clears throat> remember me. Why would he say remember? Because the thief knew that somehow that when Jesus was preaching, Somehow, Jesus was preaching to him. Somehow, Jesus knew that he was a thief. Somehow, Jesus knew that the thieving ways that he had was not the ways that he was brought up to be. That was not the way his parents brought him up. That's not he, how he was taught. And, 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 but somehow, he got in a bad company, and he found himself stealing. And somehow, Jesus called to remind him of how good he is, the qualities that he had, because he was created in the image of God, just like the other like the other thief, created in the image of God to glorify God. But he spent his life glorifying himself with riches that was not helpful to him. He had all of those wonderful things, but it was not helpful. Adventurous. How many of you today? has walked around <clears throat> and you have taken things that doesn't belong to you. You at school, you have taken pens and pencils that don't belong to you. But somehow or the other, when you get home, 
you're uncomfortable because mom and dad keeps looking at you and they keep looking at that pen and they know they didn't give you that pen. They know that that pencil that you have or that, that book that you have, you didn't have, didn't give it to you. And they keep getting uncomfortable every time you see it. Every single time you get uncomfortable, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. I want you to understand. I want you to understand tonight that if you as children have done bad things, when daddy has told you not to take that cookie out of the cookie jar, Leave it to after supper, but you wait till mom and dad is gone to sleep and you come out and take it and blame it on your sister or blame it on your brother. But then mom and dad has called you up and everybody is getting corrected now because you have done something wrong. And the correction that you're getting is the rebuke and the correction is because of the love of your parents because they don't want you to die. They don't want you to go out there and grow up as being thieves and then somehow get arrested. Jesus didn't want that for the thieves because the Bible says the wages of sin is death and stealing is a sin. But a gift of God is eternal life. And the thief realized that look at me now. I'm here. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And quite rightly, I'm going to die for my sin. But Jesus, Jesus, you have said that Though my sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And though my blood be like crimson, it shall be as wool. So Jesus, I believe what you said. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for stealing when you was preaching. Forgive me for those wrong things. But I also want to thank you for your sermon. Thank you. And I ask you, please, I know I'm going to die today. But remember me. Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, today shall thou be with me in paradise. Today, today. I want you to understand something. How many of you are living today? Does God promise you tomorrow? How many of you are knowing that you're going to see tomorrow? How many of you? Believe you're going to see tomorrow. How many of you? Carmen, are you going to see tomorrow? Patrick, you going to see tomorrow? <clears throat> I'm talking to the parents. How many of you as parents believe you're going to see tomorrow? COVID-19 came in and a lot of people had plans. Big plans. 2020, 2021, 2022. 2023, all my daughters are going to grow up and they're going to go into to, to secondary school and university and somehow or the other COVID-19 came in. Schools got closed. Churches got closed. And everything suddenly got closed and some people among us, even in our churches, got sick. And today, that same day, they were gone. That same day, it was over. They were no longer. They were no longer. But they had big plans. For tomorrow, I want you to understand something. Jesus said today, because that thief was not going to make it for tomorrow. That thief was going to die today. And he knew that somehow or the other, Jesus talked about a kingdom that he was going to prepare after he rise. And the thief, even though he saw Jesus on the cross, believed what Jesus said. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? That even in the darkest hour, the thief saw the light. Even in the darkest hour, the thief saw the light. And not only did the thief see the light, for the Bible says further down in verse 47, that even the centurion, the centurion saw the light, saw the light. The centurion who was a heathen man, the centurion who was one of those that was responsible for the murder, the brutal murder of Jesus Christ, he saw the light and he declared, certainly this was a righteous man. Certainly this was a righteous man. Jesus of Nazareth teaches us something From the pen of inspiration, the thief, the thief <clears throat> knew he met Jesus. He met Jesus there on the cross. He met Jesus right there on the cross, not for the first time, 
not for the first time, but he met Jesus on the cross for the last time here on earth. But if a promise that he was going to see Jesus again in the earth made me. So he said to Jesus, I believe in your promise. I believe in who you are, that truly you are the savior of the world. And today I'm asking you to remember me. Remember me when you come. How many of you want Jesus to remember you when he comes? If you want Jesus to remember you when he comes, you also have to repent. I see your hands. I see your hands. How many of you want to see, I see your hands? How many of you want to see Jesus, want Jesus to remember you when he comes? Why must he remember you? He must remember you because you realize that all the things that mom and dad was telling you, that Jesus said you must do. Thou shalt love the Lord your God. Thou shalt not bow down to anything. Thou shalt not take unto you any graven image. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not commit murder. All of these things, you realize that these things, as you've looked around you, you've seen that a lot of people are going to jail and a lot of people are losing their lives because of these things. And you were doing some of these things, even as young people, you were lying and stealing and doing bad things as adventurers. But on the adventurer club, you've learned now that you don't have to do those things. You don't have to do those things. Today, Jesus is speaking to your heart. Every single time that your pathfinder leaders and your adventurers and your, your parents are telling you these things, you're realizing that the same opportunity that you have, uh, that the thief had on the cross, you are given the same opportunity today to be saved. The same opportunity to be saved. The same opportunity. The question is, the question is, the question is, the question is, are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening to that opportunity? The thief thought that he was getting away with things. Like the parents, sometimes as parents would think they're getting away with things. We think we're getting away with things. But all, everything that we're doing, every single thing that we're doing, God is watching. Every single thing that we're doing, God is watching. And the story is telling us that Jesus came and while he was preaching, he was preaching with a purpose in mind and that was to save even the thieves that were on the cross. Today, Jesus is trying to save you. Are you hearing the message of Jesus today to your parents? Are you really hearing the message of the that you're given in your adventure club and in your pathfinder club? Are you really listening to the messages that God can change you? God can change your parents. God can change your friends. Today, you don't have to always believe the devil that you are never going to change. Sometimes as parents, we tell our children, you're going to be worthless. You're good for nothing. We say that to our children. But Jesus, when he came, he says, my jewels, my precious jewels, you are jewels in God's hands. You are gifts to your parents. And every single thing that you do, God has got a plan to save you. God has got a plan to save you. I want you to take some time with your parents and go through the story carefully. There's a lot more I would want to bring out in the story, but I want you to understand that the story was so important that these thieves had the opportunity. None of them was without excuse. They heard the word. But one chose to listen to the word and the other chose to disobey the word. One was saved and one was lost. Today, we have the same opportunity. We're given the opportunity to listen to the word. But the devil who is a thief and is a liar is trying to steal the word from us. When you go to church, he's trying to steal the word from us so that to make you distracted so you can play with your friends. But that message is for you. And every single time you hear that voice saying to listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, you need to hear the voice of God. He didn't have an ear. Let him hear what your parents say. Let him hear what your mom and dad say. Let him hear what your counselor is saying that is standing for God, teaching you the things of God. For the time is coming that one day we would die. But I pray tell that the day that comes when you and I die, when you and I die, that we would have died saying, Lord, remember me. Remember me. I was once naughty and you saw that. 
But thank you for your saving grace. Thank you for coming and sending your son to die for me. Thank you for the story about the thief on the cross to show that even though that I was bad and sometimes I did bad things, that is hope for me. Hope for me out of my hopeless situation. Even though mom and dad scold me, I thank you for that scolding because it's to save me. Thank you. Help me to be good boys and girls. Help me to be good adventurers so that I can tell my friends how important it is not to steal. Because if you steal, if you steal, you can lose your life permanently. You can lose your life permanently and not make it to the kingdom of God. But if you repent and obey, you can be saved. So help us to be good adventurers. Help us to spend time following you and not following our friends. Help us to always obey your word. Help us always to listen to Jesus when we go to church, when we go to school, when we are play, when the, the Bible is in our, our bags. Help us to read it and understand it and to follow everything that we are taught so that when you come, you will be able to take us home. God bless you all this evening. As you remember the thieves on the cross, there were two. One that was obedient and one that was disobedient. One that got saved and one that was lost. Man, if you put your hands up that you want to be saved, so today, if there's anything that you know that you've done wrong at home, turn to your moms and your dads after this meeting and go apologize. And parents, I want you to be open, open your hearts like Jesus and receive your children. When they come to you and tell you, daddy, you know, I did something wrong and I, I hid it from you. Listen to them. And hug them. Yes, I see Ruth looking back. And I see so many of you looking back. The things that I know that daddy don't know about. But I want you to take some time as parents with your children right now. After this meeting, go spend some time with each other. Because at such a time as this, Jesus is about to come. And he does not want any one of our children to be lost. That's why he says, suffer the little children to come out of me. Forbid them not. For such is the kingdom of God today. We don't want our children to be crucified on a cross like the two thieves. We want our children to be saved. So parents, I want you to spend your time with your children. Talk with them. Share with them. Care for them. Give them the opportunity to know that they can come to you even in the darkest hour. Even when they know that you're going to get upset by what you've got to say. Let them know that the love of Jesus reigns in your heart. Show them Jesus that they can be saved. If your head's bowed. And your eyes closed, Father in heaven. I want to thank you for the opportunity of prayer. I want to thank you for the opportunity you granted us to be in this place. I want to thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, that you sent your son, Jesus of Nazareth, to die on the cross for each and every one of us. Father in heaven, these thieves, both of them had the opportunity to be saved. One chose to accept and the other chose to reject. And oh, Heavenly Father, we notice what's happened here right, right there in front of everybody's eyes. We read these things as if they're just stories. But oh, Heavenly Father, remind us that such a time as this, we too will be facing this judgment. We'll either be condemned for our attitudes and our actions, or we'll be saved because of our repentance and our acknowledgement of your saving grace. I pray that our children that are listening this afternoon would have heard the story and would have looked very carefully at a lesson's talk. And I pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that as they bow on their knees each night and ask you for forgiveness, that through their parents, you will teach them how to live as children, how to be bright boys and girls, good boys and girls doing the will of thee. Thank you. Thank you for hearing and answering this prayer as you bless each and every one of them right now. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen.